Okay, let's talk about this. So this is a question from a 2023 Berkeley math tournament. And let's just read about that. <coughs> the Berkeley math tournament, <coughs> abbreviated BMT. It's for high school students. It's hosted by Berkeley, which is a school out in California. I believe these are done locally um, in California, but they're also done, I believe, in Canada and also in parts of Asia. All right. Now, it's run by Berkeley. I think the students run it. What they do is come up with questions that, um, you know, a, a, a good student, either in, and certainly even middle school students and high school students that are capable of doing calculus um, would be able to uh, maybe attack a problem like this. I don't find these problems to be easy, by the way. So over here, you're given a function. And over here, you ask for the, oh, wow, this is the <coughs> 2,000. 22nd derivative of f evaluated at zero. So I'm going to say over here, I'd hate to think that a student would be um, of the nature to think that this is going to be a problem that they couldn't do because there's, you know, derivative after derivative. For example, if you wrote down f prime, well, you could do that, right? So it's going to be e to the x times the cosine of x plus e to the x times sine of x. And that's the first derivative. If you write the second derivative down, I think you get the idea that this thing appears to become unruly quite quickly. So I don't think that's the way to attack the problem. So let me erase that and um, think about something else I could do. By the way, I, I really think that it, it would take a quality student to figure this out, all right? So one thing, when I say quality student, a student that's been exposed to, uh, you know, just more than just, you know, simple things. So looking at it, I'm going to say I know an identity. And that identity I know is e to the, e to the uh, let me get my pen back. I know this one over here. And you say, I don't even know why this could possibly be related to this thing over here. It's related by e to the x, and that's about it. And what's over here? This would be i times sine of x. Now, where'd you learn these things? Um, at Essendon College, you learned about these things. You may not be a complete treatment of it, but you learned about these things in Math 120. What I'm going to do now is I want to, I want to see this in the problem. And the way I'm going to do that is multiply both sides by e to the x. So you get e to the x times e to the i x equals e to the x. I'm multiplying both sides by e to the x, by the way. Cosine x plus i e to the x sine x, all right? So I'm seeing what I want to see. I just don't understand maybe how to do this at this point, but I'm seeing what I want to see. Let me point out what I mean by that, that I'm seeing this over here. But I do see some complexity in the problem, particularly that i business over there. And by the way, I see another thing over here. It looks pretty difficult to me. But, you know, I got a real part, an imaginary part, uh, for, for a given real x. All right, so let me, let me keep going through it. And I'm gonna start looking at that and maybe I'll try to simplify it a little tiny bit. And what do I get over there? I get E, uh, let's see, I'm gonna add the exponents together and factor out an X when I do that. So that's X and then you're gonna get, let's see, one plus I. And what's that equal to? E to the X, cosine X, plus i times e to the x sine x. Now, yeah, I'm looking at this thing, I'm wondering, like, I know that right side looks really tough to differentiate. So the left side doesn't look that bad to me because differentiating e is pretty easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. This side, and I'm going to differentiate this side. Let me get my little eraser out. And uh, I'm going to try to erase the um, uh, something and make it. I'm going to try to jam it in there. Let me just get this a smaller eraser over here. And let me just do this over here. I'm going to erase this here. And I'm going to jam it in there. Equals d dx. And let, let me repeat this. this. This right side looks impossible for me to differentiate. But the left side doesn't look so bad. So I, I'm going to just, you know, do the left side. Now, if I did the first derivative, what do you get? You get e to the x, 1 plus i. 
And then, you know, I'm using the, uh, the chain rule, and you would get 1 plus i here. And that equals this guy's derivative. I'm not even going to write that down now. And then if I took another derivative, I'm going to keep going, right? I want to get the second derivative. So I'm going to keep writing that down. What, what, I get 1 plus i squared. I'll just write down d dx over here, and I'll put the little quote marks there, indicating I want this thing there. This is second derivative, so I'll put down this is d2 dx squared of that thing. And I'm not even differentiating that thing. I'm different to the right side. And I'm going to say I get e to the x 1 plus i. And I'm starting to realize that this left side looks really simple just to continue, but this right side looks impossible to me. So on the left side, if I want to the, to the 2022, you know, so the first derivative I get 1, second derivative I get 2. So if I went to the, the uh, 2000, um, you know, I notice I made a mistake over here, and i got to correct the, the notes over here. This is 2022, and I'll correct that. You're not going to see that. This is 2022, 22, 22, 22, 22. Sorry about that. 22, and um, let me just keep going through it. So to get to the 2022, I would get 1 plus i, 2022, e to the x, 1 plus i, equals d, 2022, dx, 2022, of that crazy looking right hand side. So I, I have something here that I'm, I'm kind of looking at. And I'll, again, I'll correct the notes later, by the way. And I'm looking at this thing, and I want to, I want to simplify that expansion. So I'll put this on the side for us. So I, I see 1 plus i to the 2022. And I'm really remembering back to, I guess, Math 119. And I'm going to write this as 1 plus i squared to the 1011. Let me see if that gives you 2022, right? Yeah. So I got to correct this too. This is 1011. And this is going to be 1011 too. Again, I'll correct the notes later, by the way. Let's see a look at that. Let's do the 1 plus i squared first. So 1 plus i squared. That would give me 1 plus 2i plus i squared. Well, i squared is minus 1. So this gives me 2i. So let me write that down for you. This would be 2i, 1011. 0, 1, 1. So what do you get? You get 2, 1, 0, 1, 1, i, 1, 0, 1, 1. Well, I got, I got further troubles. I'm looking at what, what's i to the 1011. Let's put this over here. I can write it as 2, 1011. And then I'm going to write down i squared. You may wonder why I'm using i squared because I know it so well. And I'm going to say it's, let's see, 505, right? That would give me 1,010. I have another i left over, by the way. So it's going to be 2, 1,011. i squared is minus 1. And minus 1 to an odd power is just minus 1. So I get a simple form of this. It's going to be minus 2, 2 to the 1,011 i. All right. So let me write that down for you. This over here is minus 2, 1, 0, 1, 1, i, and that equals this derivative over here. I'm sorry, I, 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 uh, I have to get an erase rat again. Let me put this down. Get my pen back. And again, that hash mark over there, let me just remind you. Okay? So let's write this down. And I think I, you know what, I forgot something again. I'm always forgetting things, but I'm, I'm glad I looked backwards and I'll write those things down again for you. So um, let me get my eraser out again, too. 
and I'll try to put the I there, and it's going to be E to the X 1 plus I. I know I'm jamming this in, by the way. So let's write this down. You get minus 2, 1,011, I, E, X, 1 plus I. I'm actually going to write this thing down now. And what it's going to be, it's D, DX. And the first thing I'm differentiating is E to the X, cosine X, plus, well, I'm going to differentiate the second guy, and that's going to be, actually, the I comes out, it's a constant, and it's going to be D, 2022. i got to correct these again, too. You, again, you're not going to see that, though, right? These are all 2022. I'll correct those, don't worry. So over D, X, 2022, and that's going to be E to the X, sine X, all right? So what, what I'm starting to realize is that when I'm looking at this thing over here, all I'm looking at, I'm not really looking at this over here. I'm looking at this part. That's all I'm looking at, all right? And why is that? We're just looking at the complex part of it. We're looking at this thing over here, and I see that right over here. So really what I'm going to say is that I'm going to say it's, it's minus 2. That's going to be 1,011 I E X 1 plus I equals, well, this is going to be I times F to the 2022, the derivative of X. And that's what we're looking to do, this thing over here, right? That's the derivative over here. Let's just plug it in. What do you get? Minus 2, 1,011 I E. I'm going to plug in the X now. The X is going to be equal to 0. You're going to get 0 times 1 plus I equals I F 2022, 0. Right? I's I'm going to divide it away. What are you left off with? Well, e to the 0 is just 1, so I'm left off with minus 2, 1,011, equals F 2,022, 0. Right? We're done. We got it. All right? Again, I have to make some corrections in the notes, by the way. I'll do that. You're not going to see that uh, nonsense, and I'll correct that. Thank you. This is the answer, by the way.